And welcome, everybody, to another Mark Bishop show where it is like a box of chocolates, as we say. You never know what you're going to get in the way of great stories, interesting people. And that's the way we look at it. And in this particular case, my very special guest uh, for this particular episode is the president of Five Milestones LLC. And I'd like to welcome uh, a very special lady by the name of Sheila Slick. Hi there. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your show. Hey, great to have you because uh, you run a very successful business, which we're going to get into. And I love the work you do with people. So uh, I'm grateful to have you on. Thank you. You, in fact, now have over, what, 25 years of experience in business. Uh, You were raised in Florida. Then you moved overseas to Latin America for over 20 years. What was behind that move? Well, so I grew up in Florida because the country I was born in, um, had political issues. And after graduating from college, I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, married uh, another entrepreneur. And after working for about a year, we needed experience and we needed money. I traveled back to my birth country and realized there were a lot of opportunities to be had there. So at 22 years old, we saw it like an adventure, did our business plans, packed up and moved overseas. That was the first company that we, uh, that I co-founded together with my husband. And what was that company called? What it's called, it still runs today, Tops. And it's a manufacturing company. We manufacture cabinetry, specifically industrial and medical installations. I haven't been part of the company Probably since about 1998, but here in Florida, we also have the sister company. uh, Right. So you've gone on to do your own thing, haven't you? I did. From there, I transitioned to found a family business. It was a retail jewelry store, and I did that for about a decade. But I had always wanted a master's degree because, you know, when you start your own business, you are always running into obstacles and feeling like you need help or you need to learn more. And I always thought education and MBA, you know, would have provided me some of the answers that I needed. So it was always in the back of my mind. Right. Well, uh, for what I've read, um, that throughout your career, in fact, you've you've consistently uh, demonstrated your ability to empower individuals and organizations, for that matter, guiding them towards success. Where do you think that came from in the first place? Well, I know exactly where it came from. So after that jewelry company uh, was founded, we did scale it to four companies and I still had that void. Now living overseas in a third world country, I was a mother of three. And the uh, Apple introduced the mobile application. And that change really impressed me to the point where I thought this is the future, technology is the future. I need to learn how to, you know, integrate the STEM in a, my children's education. So I challenged myself to learn how to code. I was about 36 years old, became an Apple developer and had about 13 apps up in the app store while I was still running, you know, the companies. When I got invited to participate in a hackathon for NASA, And when I got that invitation, I thought they had it all wrong because I know nothing about space. I wasn't looking to be an astronaut or a scientist for NASA. But I went ahead and I accepted the challenge so that I could help educate others on how to build an app. And to our surprise, we received a global honorable mention for most inspiring. And that brought on a lot of publicity and a lot of opportunity. And so I had a grant that was coming my way so that I could now run a program for future Fulbright candidates for the State Department. I had an insurance company say they were looking at the country next door to build them an app so that they could identify which cars were broken down. And I thought, oh, wow, like technology can change lives. It can have an impact. So that's how I began working with organizations and then continued working with a lot of nonprofits, uh, different media companies, 
And we built about 31 apps through 2018. Well, it's a lot of apps, isn't it? Because there's a lot of work goes into an app. Correct. And, you know, so tell me how then uh, your your company is dedicated to making a a positive impact in your community. How, How did you get this current company to come around to that? Well, so I moved back to Florida in 2018, went back to school, did earn that master's. But instead of a master's in, you know, an MBA, I ended up with a master's in leadership. And I thought the most rewarding time of my career, right, because I was reflecting on what I enjoyed most, coming down on my core values, what this next stage of my life would bring, I realized that it was helping others while I had been living overseas. And I needed to set roots here in our local community. So I became a SCORE mentor, which is a volunteer position. And then I became chapter chair for two counties here in Florida for two years. I just completed that term. And that's how we give back. We help small business owners with our time. And we do different events to either teach them or train them, giving them the skills they need to succeed. With the Masters in Leadership, I also have a program to help others uh, be their best selves, especially um, professionally. So by leveraging over something like, what, 25 years of uh, entrepreneurial experiences, you've, uh, along with, you know, business mentorship, uh, how would you define really what you specialize in? Well, I specialize in two things, technology, because since that 2013, that company was an information technology outsourcing company, meaning we provided tech services for companies that didn't have an IT team or whose IT team couldn't build the app. And that's yours, not mine. (laughs) I know. If you don't mind, let me just I should have. um, Shut it off. <laughs> it did. It was so that I could get the link to the new meeting. <laughs> That's all right. So go ahead, go on. What you were saying before the ding interrupted. So I lost my train of thought. Can we read? Never mind. Good. I'll ask you this then. Tell me more about your experience in business and in mentorship before we lead into what Five Milestones really does. Yes. So through either facilitation or offering do it for you services we are able to help people leverage their technology so they have the right systems in place to grow their company. Currently, I am focusing on a business management platform called Keep. I became certified with Keep so that I could take it to the next level, Mm -hmm. have a CRM and marketing automation. And that has been a game changer for me. So now I am specializing not just in technology, but I'm really integrating keep in the, you know, the software that other people are currently using. Right. Because it sounds like, you know, this day and age, uh, you've got to have some sort of software that can, you know, be user friendly to you, but do everything. Uh, Particularly if, if, if you're leading the way and you don't have a lot of staff, that type of thing is very important. Tell me more about, uh, and my view is more about the, unique services or products offered by five milestones that set it apart from, let's say, the competitors in the industry? What what makes you so different? Well, for sure, my expertise, not just in technology, but in business. So when a client comes to me, I am able to look at their entire uh, business model and see where they have gaps within the model. I am also able to offer that consulting portion of it, where perhaps someone in IT or with an IT company doesn't have that business mentorship background Uh behind them. So definitely my expertise, two, and I'm gonna mention three, two is I implement the system. So I don't just, you know, tell people where they have the gaps and I don't just coach them. I actually implement the technology for them. So if they want to do it themselves, I teach them how to do it done with you. But if they also just want to be hands off and they want it done for them, I offer that service as well. 
So that's where I think I am a bit different than other agencies or companies is the personalization, the education, and the implementation. So, so what specific industries then or sectors uh, does Five Milestones primarily, you know, cater to? How does how do you you know tailor your solutions to that? How do you meet the needs of various clients within these sectors? Well, when it was just mobile applications and websites, because mobile applications are very costly. When they're native, they're coded from scratch. It'd be like giving you a piece of paper. So a lot of companies need that digital presence and they need a website or other services to be able to get their message through or to be able um, to leverage technology. So the way that I have come down a niche down, you know, who I'm serving today has just been who I enjoy working with and where I find my own strengths lie. And that would be with other experts or consultants or coaches, Mm -hmm. service-based businesses that are looking to make an impact. And that's where my passion lies today. So even though I have served all kinds of industries in the past because it was based on the need of needing a mobile app, today I am niching down um, to these experts. And now that I have my own podcast, Mark, I am so fascinated by what I have built for mine that I'm even taking it one step further is focusing on the podcast industry and helping others either launch or uh, have the right system in place to automate a portion of the podcast. Hmm. All right. Well, could you elaborate then on uh, any recent milestones or uh, achievements perhaps that Five Milestones has accomplished? Um, well, I would definitely say launching the podcast has been a milestone. That's been and the mil- second has been uh, having my own system, which is Keep, that I got certified in last year. That was a huge milestone because it represented to me going back and learning a new skill, just like the mobile applications weren't available before I learned you know, how to code. I felt that automation is something that was fairly new enough to me that I had to relearn a new skill. All right. Well, you keep talking about, you know, keep, I gather it's one of the services out there uh, in the marketplace as the software and uh, why is this so good for, for instance, the podcasting industry, as an example? Well, so when you have a podcast, for example, you have an entire process. It begins with finding you know, who you want to invite to your podcast, having the, the right audience. So once you have the right audience, you now have to book them so that they can appear on your show. You have to gather information so that then you can research a little bit about them and be able to make thought-provoking questions or intriguing questions that are going to resonate with your audience. Mm -hmm. So by just having that part automated, I can tell you firsthand that you have a better start than other podcasters that perhaps are beginning with, here's a link, book it on my calendar. Because at that point, you're not gathering that information. You're having to do a lot of these processes manually or keeping them, you know, an Excel sheet. That takes time. So now you're focusing on that rather than just showing up and being ready for the show. And it doesn't end there. Once you have the show, now you need to communicate again (laughs) with that client. You need to send the follow-up email. You need to send the, you know, how can we collaborate more? Because you're meeting people that share the same interests or the same audience so all of this is facilitated when you have a program like that in place. Does it all. So in what ways then can you explain the five milestones, your company, how does it prioritize innovation and adaptability, you know, to stay ahead uh, of a constantly evolving business landscape? What, uh, what do you look out for? You know, what, what do you need to stay ahead of to be a leader in business, do you think? Continuous education and an open mind always continue adapting and changing because when you don't, you become irrelevant. So those are also two of my core values is continuous education and embracing change. 
Would it be fair to ask you what um, your goal would be now then, that you've got to to this level where you're at? What What's the next step for five milestones? Well, I'm going to break that up in two. I'm going to break it into five milestones and then Sheila Slick. Uh, I have begun to separate the two. So Sheila Slick, her milestone is to write a book and to do more public speaking. I did a lot of public speaking while I lived overseas. Then we had the COVID year, so we all migrated to digital platforms. Mm -hmm. And now that I've done a lot of events facilitating in-person events, I'm really enjoying the human connection again. And I'd love to take that to another level. As for five milestones, which is part of the reason that I needed a system in place, I'm looking to continue digitizing what I can and package it so that in about 10, 15 years, I have a business that I've scaled that I can sell. When I moved overseas, one of the mistakes I believe I made was how I set it up and having used my name, I wasn't able to sell the company as a company. So rather I sold clients off rather than, you know, having had the right exit plan. And this is, you know, that next step for me would be to, build it properly right. and have that exit plan so that I am able to sell it off as a company. All right. So uh, you're doing well. Congratulations. I mean, uh, how many languages do you speak, by the way? Two. I speak English and Spanish. <laughs> one of my apps, because I love to travel, one of my apps before I was heading off to South America, Brazil, was Travel Talk. And there I had in three languages, I had Portuguese and French. Okay. So because they're Romance languages, they're fairly easier for me to understand. I can read them, but I can't really speak them. So I did practice a lot of Portuguese. Eh, parlo italiano un poquito. <laughs> uh, speak Italian just a little bit, huh? Enough to at least understand it or. All right. Now, I've got uh, running on the screen at your uh, email at the moment. If uh, anybody would like to contact you in reference to getting help from you, support, that's Sheila Slick at fivemilestones.com, correct? Correct, Mark. All right, that's the one for there. And you are a business consultant, but one of the best ways would be no doubt to what? Go to uh, your website, do you think? Fivemilestones.com. All right. And that's as simple as, uh, you know, <laughs> looking at your email, you know what that is. But people can call you directly, can't they? I mean, you're very friendly. 855-625-3297. That's the business number. And um, you leave a message, you'll get back to them. So you're not one of these people that, you know, uh, somebody else answers and never uh, they never contact you back. So that's nice to know. Anything you'd like to share uh, for anybody to motivate perhaps before you leave? Well, I would like to let your audience know that if they would like to meet with me, I'd be more than happy to go over what systems they have in place to see if I can work with them and help them optimize their business. In the event they'd be interested in KEEP, by going through a certified partner like myself, I can not only offer a special price or special benefits, whether or not they want my tech help, that offer is there. That's very nice. Well, Sheila Slick, thank you so much. President, founder, Five Milestones, uh, LLC, uh, going places. You're going to hear a lot more about her, and I appreciate the time you've given us to be on the show. I wish you luck for the future. Thank you so much, Mark, and I'll continue tuning into your show. You're most welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye.